Abroad. 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 Abroad, anywhere away from your home country, your homeland, um, it definitely implies a long distance, something not familiar to you at all. Yeah, I feel like specifically it means outside of your country, like whatever your country is. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just anywhere that's not home, I guess, anywhere that's not where you normally are, where you spend most of your time. What you know, I don't think I have to leave the country to be abroad. If I was I traveling like it, the United States, I would say that I'm abroad. I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I would say that yeah. it specifically means outside of your country. Hmm. Like international. I would say you could definitely use the word abroad for any context where you're leaving your home. But I think especially here in America and especially with the college context, when you're thinking about studying abroad, you're definitely always thinking about leaving the country. Yeah, I think it's a it's a term that is not used often and yeah. not used casually at all. And almost the only time you're gonna hear this is in that context of study abroad. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. If you are new here, hey, what's up? My name's Danny. I am a junior cop, no I'm not. I take that back. I am officially a senior in college, which is terrifying. I go to Loyola University, Maryland, and this entire past semester I spent in Madrid, Spain. It was, without a doubt, the best five months of my entire life. I would pay serious money to go back, but I can't. And while I was abroad, I made so many study abroad videos that a lot of you guys actually found my channel from, which is awesome. And because of that, I am constantly getting hit with so many study abroad related questions. Right. But well, I think I the know. definition of abroad, you know, you wouldn't say going to the grocery store is abroad. When I say leaving your home, I don't mean like literally your house, but going outside of the the area that you would normally travel like within. Like your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. Like if I was going to go to... California and then all around the whole country, I would say I was traveling abroad. So I have done that and I would not have said I was traveling abroad. Is For it me, it specifically means traveling outside of your country. If hmm. I if I told somebody I was um, travel like if you travel domestically, you're traveling within your home country. Hmm. And our country is very big. But if I said I'm going to travel abroad, there would be an implication that I was traveling outside of the continent of the United States. It's, it's interesting because, you know, we live in the United States. We're states. So leaving the state is kind of like leaving your country, but not really. It's definitely not. It's not. Yeah. But so would you say going to Canada or Mexico yes, is abroad? Yes, you're traveling abroad. So it is definitely the country and not necessarily the continent. So like if you were in Spain and you went to Italy... Well, I don't know. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how European nations use that. Right. Because like, I, I most often have heard the term abroad used when you cross a sea. Yeah. See, that's why I was asking if Canada and Mexico counted. I feel because like, we don't you know, have to cross a sea for that. I yeah. realize I don't know the formal definition of abroad. <laughs> that is not a word. Have you not heard it very often? That I use. The I old, have heard it often. Like, that's only, the only in the context of traveling. Is the yes. only yeah. time I've ever traveling heard the term abroad, abroad, and I and most often I have heard it. I've heard traveling abroad as in traveling to, an across across the sea to um to Europe or China or Europe. so I yeah I think that it's like you have to be to another country, and most often it's used to describe traveling over an ocean. Yeah, but, but yeah. the second, there's a, a second definition is in different directions over a wide area. It's like widely far and wide everywhere. So there you so go. Something there like you, you have mentioned. Yeah. But, yeah. So maybe it depends on how far you have traveled in your life. Like I've done a lot of travel. And so for me, abroad is maybe different than some people's. Yeah. So uh, you haven't really used this word. No. I have. I have. Like for me, I have experienced this word a lot in dealing with traveling to a faraway country, generally overseas, but not necessarily, like if you, um, if, if I traveled to South America, then I would be traveling abroad. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't use abroad for traveling to Canada or Mexico because I'm not, I'm not really going that far. There are neighboring countries, but if I were to go to Europe or to Australia, I'd be going abroad. Or Brazil. Or Brazil. Brazil, <laughs> you're not crossing an ocean, but you're going far. You are kind of the goal. <laughs> like, oh, let's say you, you travel to Brazil. 
Will you tell your friend you are going abroad? No. I would. I, yes. If I, I was would. saying, if I was going to Brazil, I would say I'm traveling abroad. Yeah. If you go to New Me- uh, Mexico. No, I would just say I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. I, I would, and I would just yeah, I would say I'm going to Mexico or I'm going to Brazil. What context would you use the word abroad? I, I don't think I would use it. It's okay. Not, okay. Yeah, it's just this not. This is a, not an Eric's vernacular. Yeah, no, it's just the only time I ever hear that word is when someone makes the statement traveling abroad. Yes. I've never heard abroad in in any other context than traveling abroad, which so, means to another country far right. away. Very far away. Well, well, will you say this word is more formal? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. It's a formal word? Yes. I think yes. so. Yes. Yes. Uh, I would say what so, yes. You say? I guess I'm thinking of a formal word as something you use in a formal context, like at a dinner party. Sure. <laughs> Where else would you hear it? <laughs> Hello, I'm traveling abroad. I went abroad. I'm planning to travel abroad this summer. Yeah, it feels like kind of a... <laughs> right, right. I don't know. Like, it's a too no, formal of a word. It's a not casual. Over word. brandy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to drink no. brandy and say, oh, I'm traveling abroad. <laughs> My time abroad. Like, <laughs> when I was just a young lad, I went abroad. <laughs> so, so basically, if you say you're traveling, you just say the things. I yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm traveling yeah. to Mexico or to Europe or. You know, it's because travel is so easy and accessible now that we don't use abroad anymore. It doesn't seem like Europe or China or Australia are so far away. We're not going to a different world. Yeah. You know, we're just. Oh uh, yeah. Let's say uh, if you are in China now and you calling your insurance in America to. Report something to try to let them cover you something. We will say now I'm abroad. You, I would say I am going to be spending my this time abroad. You will in, say that. Yeah, well, perhaps. You, 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 could, you could. You could. You could. You could say I'm going yeah. to be spending the summer abroad in this country, and that person would no understand that you mean I'm going to be spending this time far away from my country. Will you use this word? I probably would not, just because it seems a little excessive. I don't have to say I'm traveling abroad when I could just say, oh, I'm going to China. So if you see China on my bank statements, that's why. If I say, oh, I'm going abroad, you know, that doesn't give you any kind of context of where I'm going. So if I'm actually trying to do business and telling you where I'm going, I might as well just tell you where I'm going. I yeah, might. I want to use the phrases like, Gaudy or hoity-toity, like but I know <laughs> both of those are like you know American jargon, but it's like a way to describe like being too formal. Too much. Words. It was the upbeat yeah. play that we were just doing at our very formal yeah. dinner. Yeah, it's now... the difference between someone saying, "Oh, I'm going to go to China," and someone saying, "Well, this summer I'll be traveling abroad." Now... You know, it's just sort of you know. It These seems guys excessive. say that, <laughs> but I might say traveling abroad. That might be in my vernacular, yeah. but okay. I but say many more words. English, and she says that I have a many, lot many more words. fancy words. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, okay, you say it's a fancy word. Like if somebody say to you, "Now I'm gonna go abroad." Like, yeah, it feels oh, like they're trying to be fancy. Like, why don't you just tell me you're going to China? Why are you going abroad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's uncommon. What if they're going to What if they're going to 15 countries? What no, that is gonna... amazing. I'm gonna definitely be jealous that you're traveling abroad because but I, might... I want to travel abroad. But <laughs> I mean, I might say that I'm going to Europe this summer, yeah. and that's a lot of countries. I'm very going to uncommon. Europe and then to Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very uncommon. I mean, what if you go to boarding school? Abroad? What, what, okay, we, we use this word in writing. No, no. I, don't, no, I would I'm not imagine much... that I would use this word at all. Okay, I am much less all. likely to use this word in writing than I would be to use it in speaking. Um, I am more likely to use the word abroad speaking than in writing. Okay. Eric's not going to use it at all, ever. I just don't think so, no. I think I would be more specific and describe where I was going. Yeah. Okay, so there's one definition, interestingly, uh, for abroad. Uh, it's that uh, the example is there is clearly a new spirit abroad. Can you there's a new spirit? Yeah, there, there is a clear a new spirit abroad. Can you? So in this yeah, context, I think they're using abroad. abroad to mean, to describe like a wide area. So there's a new spirit abroad, meaning there's a new spirit across. spread out across a large yeah. community or a large physical space. 
So not the same way that we're using it to describe traveling to spaces that are far away, but just to describe a large space. Does that make sense? Yeah. I still, I still think it like- Also it's very uncommon. Basically, I, I mean, I, that, that phrase, is a little confusing to me. I feel like there's a better way that someone could say whatever they're trying to say. But the way that I interpret that is that there's a new spirit outside of my main country. Like in the rest of the world, mm. outside of this country, there's a new spirit and it's different than whatever kind of situation would be before. Yeah, the Chinese definition is more similar to Eric said. Yeah, it's some, like spreading off. Uh, to spread across. Yeah, that's interesting because I would not really use abroad to describe. Yeah, I mean. A, a large area? Yeah. A but large like, area. because to me, abroad has a very narrow definition. But this is making a. a like a, a broader definition. <laughs> I, I mean, like in the Google, th a this broader, model, kind of not a broad, <laughs> very different. <laughs> yeah, like the second definition I have talked about, like in Google, it basically has a subtitle talking about feelings or rumor uh, widely current. Oh, like spreading something far and wide, like from your center point out? Yeah, kind of like that, <laughs> like, but you haven't really. I haven't experienced that context in my life. Not common. Again, just not common. This is something that I would, I might read in a book, but I wouldn't hear between two people talking to each other. I've read a lot of books and I haven't experienced that, but that doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> well, I think maybe the word like broad is a wide range. Yeah. And if you're talking about abroad, it's traveling. It, yeah, does that give you the, the feeling of. Sure. Anywhere large, big, you know. The cross. actual meaning of abroad is a broad space, and then traveling. A uh, is the traveling. Yeah. Broad is a wide area. Right. So abroad is traveling over a large space. So, but conceivably, I could see it going there, but right. I've never heard it used in that exactly. Context. I've never either. I would not use abroad. I'm just learning. I'm learning a new thing right now. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I wouldn't use abroad for my feelings for. No, anything. Spreading anything. I don't spread my peanut butter abroad my toast. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely spread my peanut butter like across my toast. What or, if you had or like just on my toast. a piece of toast that was like the size of the state of Texas? Then would it be a, a No, broad? I would only, <laughs> I would only abroad I would spread it far and wide. I would spread it far and wide. Far and wide, but not abroad. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, very good, very good. For today's video, I am going to be filming a study abroad Q&A. I have some questions that I received from you guys, and I also have some questions that I found on the internet. So if you are curious about studying abroad and you want to know more, please watch this video. If you don't normally watch my channel, I will just quickly tell you that I am a UC Berkeley student. I'm going to be a senior, and... I chose Sydney, Australia to study abroad for the summer. I'm getting six units total and my program is a little bit different so I have an internship. I have like a three week workshop through the University of Sydney and then I also have an online UC Berkeley class to complete that goes up until August. I'm required to complete 172 hours of internship. Also quick disclaimer, obviously this is all part of my own experience and every Everyone has a different situation, everyone goes to a different school, all of that. I'm just going to try to give you my best advice. The first question is, how much should I save before studying abroad? How do I pay for studying abroad? Obviously it depends how much your school is willing to give you for summer or in general. Personally, I thought I was going to have to pay the entire study abroad amount because I normally don't get that much from the school in general. So I wasn't really thinking that I would get a lot of money unless I took out a loan. And then I found out that they give $1,500 to every student that studies abroad. So I was like, woo, that's awesome. And then I also received another $1,500. I'm not even really sure where that came from, but it was from the school. So I had $3,000 given to me from my school to study abroad and that covered three fourths of my tuition. I think it's around $4,000 for me to go to school here for two months and do all that and like live in this place. 
and then all I had to do was pay for my flight as well as my extra living expenses like my food, my extra books, um, shopping, activities, all of that. That was really awesome that I was given money that I didn't even really expect to get. Every school has their own different thing, but definitely look into it. Go to your study abroad advisor and figure that out. A lot of my friends take out small loans if their parents can't help them in any way. I saved up a good amount of money because I decided about a year ago that I wanted to study abroad. So I was saving a lot because I wasn't banking on my parents giving me any money and I wanted to make sure that I would have enough money to eat and like do a few activities while I was here. It's definitely expensive. Obviously it also depends on what country you choose to study abroad in. My roommate Karen studied abroad in Korea and she said it was really cheap there so her money went a lot farther than mine does here. Fortunately, the US dollar is worth a bit more in Australia, so my money goes a little further, but it is still very expensive to eat here. It's pretty expensive to do anything here. It adds up depending on what you want to do and all of that. I think if you really need to budget it out, figure out how much you would need to spend on food every week and then how much you would need to spend on transportation. So for me, I have to commute to my internship. I get on the train every time I go there. That costs around $4 to get there and back. So like account for that and then figure out how much it would cost for like extra activities that you wanna do during a week and just kind of get a rough estimate on how much you would need every week that you're here. Abroad. Abroad.